Whenever it was not raining, Henry and his friends worked hard on the clubhouse. They measured and sawed and nailed according to Mark's plan. When Henry was delivering his papers, he noticed that one of his customers was having his roof covered with asphalt shingles, and he was able to persuade the workmen to give him enough leftover material to shingle the roof of the clubhouse. He bought two big hinges so that they would have a door that would really open and close. Beezus and Ramona, and sometimes Lisa, came over almost every day to watch the progress of the building. They stayed until time for the Sheriff Bub program on television, which Ramona never missed. I could help, offered Beezus. I bet I can drive nails. No girls allowed, said Murph curtly. I could make curtains for the windows, suggested Beezus. Who wants curtains? answered Henry. Who would have been willing to let Beezus help, because for a girl she was pretty sensible. But when a boy is working with other boys, he sometimes feels he has to act the way they do. So Beezus sat on the Huggins' back steps and watched, while Ramona amused herself. Ramona never had any trouble keeping herself entertained. She climbed to the top step and began to count ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Then she jumped to the ground. I know where I could get an old doormat, suggested Beezus hopefully. What's the use of having a clubhouse if you have to wipe your feet like in a regular house? asked Robert. It was not possible for Beezus to make a suggestion that would please the boys. Get lost, said Murph rudely. Well, all right for you, smarty. It was easy to see that Beezus' feelings were hurt. Mess around with your old boy stuff, see if I care. Come on, Ramona, let's go home. It's almost time for Sheriff Bud. Ramona finished blasting off and trotted along home with her sister. Henry was really sorry to see Beezus' feelings hurt, but he did not like to say so in front of the older boys, who were too busy installing the real glass windows to pay any attention to what had just happened. While the boys worked, Murph began to recite some strange sounds. They weren't words, so Henry and Robert had trouble catching exactly what it was he was saying. The syllables, whatever they were, had a catchy sound and rhythm. Say that again, Murph. Henry found himself wanting to make the sounds himself. Once more, Murph rattled off the syllables. This time, Henry caught a beep and a boom. Hey, that sounds keen, said Robert. Where'd you learn that? From my cousin in California, answered Murph. He learned it from a lifeguard. Say it again and slow down, said Henry. I want to learn it. Murph laid down his hammer and recited slowly and distinctly. Fadada, 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 beep'em, boop'em, ba. Rada, dada, boom, sh, afa, dee, dee, bobo. Henry and Robert laid down their tools, too. Fadada, fadada, fadada. They began slowly at first, but in a few minutes they had mastered the sounds and could rattle them off as fast as Murph. Hey, I have an idea, Henry was enthusiastic. We could be a club and use it for a secret password, and always say it so fast other kids couldn't learn it. Sure, agreed Robert. All the kids will want to learn it, and we won't teach it to them. Especially girls. Murph picked up a screwdriver and went to work to install the door hinges. At last the clubhouse was finished. The siding was snug and tight. The hinges worked perfectly. The asphalt shingles were nailed down so securely the roof could not possibly leak. Yes, the boys agreed. It was a good solid house. It was just about as solid as a real house. They thumped the walls appreciatively and stamped their feet on the floor. And the best part of it was, it was big enough for three boys to sleep in, if they didn't move around too much. And who could move around in a sleeping bag? Yes, sir, sell it as the Rock of Gilbertar. Mer spoke with pri- Wait, what's Gilbertar? Mer spoke with pride, for he was the one who had drawn up the plans in the first place. Then Murph built a shelf, and Henry went into the basement and lugged out the stuffed owl, which his mother would not let him keep in his room, because she thought it looked as if it had moss. He set the owl on the shelf. It was exactly what the place needed, a really masculine touch. Fadada, 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 chanted the boys. When we all get sleeping bags, we can spend the night out here, said Henry. Robert Murph, it developed, already had sleeping bags, so Henry dropped the subject. He did not want them sleeping in the clubhouse while he slept in his own bed. Fortunately, it was time for him to start his paper route, so there was no more discussion of sleeping in the clubhouse. Then mysterious things began to happen in the clubhouse. One day after school, Henry found the owl's glass eyes turned so that it looked cross-eyed. That's funny, he thought. He straightened the eyes and forgot about them. 
But the next day, when Henry and Robert entered the clubhouse, they were startled to see that the owl, its eyes once again crossed, appeared to be smoking a cigarette. Upon closer examination, they found that a small tube of white paper had been fastened to the owl's beak with scotch tape. How do you like that? Robert ripped off the cigarette in disgust while Henry straightened the eyes once more. I'll bet old Beezus did this. That was just what Henry was thinking. He felt a little disappointed that sensible Beezus would do such a thing as this. Not that he could really blame her after the way she had been treated. The boys found a can of paint in Henry's garage and started painting a No Girls Allowed, This Means You sign, which Robert finished after Henry went to start his paper route. The next afternoon, Henry, Robert, and Murph raced home from school on their bicycles to protect their clubhouse from a possible invasion of Beezus and Ramona. When they opened the door, they found the owl's eyes were crossed once more. It was wearing a doll's pink bonnet with a ribbon tied under his chin, if an owl could be said to have a chin, and in its beak it held a crayon sign that said, Down with boys! Well, how do you like that? exclaimed Henry, thinking that Beezus must have come in the morning before school, because they had ridden so fast she could not possibly have reached the clubhouse ahead of them this afternoon. The nerve of some people, said Robert, a doll bonnet on her owl. That's a girl for you, Murph tore down the side. A lock, that's what we need, said Henry. A padlock, agreed Murph. With a key, said Robert. Henry dug into his pocket for some of the money he had earned on his route, and the three boys rode off to the hardware store to select a clasp and a padlock. When they returned, the owl was holding a sign that said, Ha ha, you think you're smart. Murph screwed the clasp in place because he was the fastest with tools. While he worked, Henry and Robert decided that because the lock came with only two keys, and each member could not have one, they should find two secret hiding places. They talked it over in whispers, and after looking around to make sure Beezus was not hiding in the shrubbery, they hid one key under an oil can in the garage and the other under a flower pot on the back porch. They vowed always to put the keys back in place, because it would not be fair for any one boy to carry a key when there were not enough keys to go around. It was with the feeling of deed well done that the boy snapped shut the padlock when it was time for Henry to start his route. That would keep old Beezus out. She could not possibly get in now. The house was solidly built and the windows taken from the old garage were not the kind that could be opened. After that, the boys had no more trouble. Their next project was painting the house. The front and the north side were to be white, while the back and south side were to be green. The boys did not have enough paint of one color from the whole house, and anyway, as Murph pointed out, nobody could see all four sides at the same time. Henry painted a little each afternoon before starting his route, and Robert and Murph continued to work after he had gone. Beezus and Ramona sometimes walked up the driveway to see what was going on. When the boys ignored them, they went away, but they did not go away quietly because Ramona was always singing some tune or other that she had learned from television. Sometimes it was a song about shampoo, but usually it was a verse about a kind of bread that builds strong bodies eight different ways. I guess we fixed her, the boys congratulated one another. You won't catch her bothering us anymore. And when the girls were gone, they chanted their magic words. Fadada, 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 beep em boop em ba, rada dada, boom shh, effa, dee dee, bobo. All for one and one for all. That was Henry Robert Murph. Then one cold November afternoon, Henry came home from school to find that his mother had left a note telling him she had gone downtown and would not be back until 6 o'clock. She also told him not to eat any pie. Henry used his finger to wipe up some juice that had oozed through the pie crust. Hmm, blackberry. Then he made himself a peanut butter sandwich and, with Ribsy trotting after him, went outside, where he removed a key from under the flower pot, unlocked the clubhouse, and carefully returned the key to its hiding place. Henry stepped inside the clubhouse and patted the owl's head. Everything was in order. Ribsy curled up in a corner and prepared to go to sleep. Hello. It was Ramona's voice. Henry turned and saw the little girl sitting on the back steps. She was bundled up because the day was cold and she too was eating a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, hello, he said. Where's Beezus? Home. Why didn't she come with you? Henry felt that Ramona could cause enough trouble when she was with Beezus. He did not want her around without her older sister to look after her. "'Because you were mean to her,' answered Ramona. Henry felt slightly uncomfortable because there was truth in what Ramona said. Even so, boys had a right to do boy things without girls around, didn't they? And Beezus didn't have to mess up their clubhouse, did she? He looked at Ramona sitting on the steps chewing her peanut butter sandwich. "'Why don't you go home?' he asked, seeing no reason for being hospitable to Ramona. "'I don't want to,' said Ramona, and went on chewing." Well, as long as she had a sandwich to keep her busy. Henry looked around the clubhouse to see how it could be furnished. 
Oh, an orange crate nailed to the wall would make a good cupboard. He measured the space with his hands. Yes, an orange crate would be just the right size. Henry was aware that the clubhouse had suddenly grown darker. He turned and saw that the door must have blown shut. Just then he heard a snap and he had a terrible feeling. He tried the door. It was locked. Locked from the outside and there was only one person who could have done it. Ramona. Henry looked out of the window and saw Ramona sitting on the steps, calmly licking her fingers. You let me out of here, he yelled. Ramona stopped licking long enough to answer. I don't have a key. This stopped Henry. Of course she didn't have a key. Both keys were carefully hidden and he was not going to tell any girl where they were either. He could get out some way. Henry threw his shoulder against the door. Nothing happened. It was a good, solid door. He threw his shoulder against the walls. Still nothing happened. They were good, solid walls. Henry rubbed his shoulder and decided that Murph had done a good job of planning the clubhouse. Maybe too good. Next, he jumped up and down as hard as he could. The floor was a good, solid floor. The whole clubhouse, Henry concluded, was as solidly built as a jail, and right now that's exactly what it was. Next, Henry considered breaking a window. He looked around, but there was not a hammer or a stick of wood he could use. If he slammed his fist through the glass, he would be sure to cut himself. And even if he did break the glass, the windows were divided into four small panes, and he had no way of removing the dividing pieces of wood. Next, Henry tried yelling, Help! Help! He shouted at the top of his voice. Help! Ribsy stood up and barked. Nothing happened. Nothing at all unless she counted the pleased look on Ramona's face. Where was everybody anyway? Huh, huh, help, said Ramona, as if she were thinking very hard. Little puss of vapor came out of her mouth because the afternoon was so cold. Help begins with an H. Plainly, Ramona was pleased with herself for making this discovery. Her kindergarten teacher was teaching her class the sounds the letters make. Henry knew that his mother was downtown. Robert was getting a haircut, Beezus was home, and he did not know where Murph was. Then he caught a glimpse of Mrs. Grumby, his next-door neighbor, looking out an upstairs window. Help! he yelled, pounding on the door. Let me out! Mrs. Grumby nodded and waved. She was used to boys playing in Henry's backyard. There was nothing to do, Henry decided, but try to make himself comfortable until his mother came home. He sat down on the floor and leaned against the wall. Ho-hum. It was going to be a long, cold wait. He felt cross and disgusted. That Ramona. That pest. Suddenly, Henry leaped to his feet. His route! His paper route! He had to get out! He could not stay trapped until six o'clock or he wouldn't get his papers delivered in time. And he knew what his father would say about that. Boy! The only thing to do, Henry decided, was to tell Ramona where the key was and to get her to unlock the padlock. That would not be so terrible now that he had stopped to think about it. All he would have to do was find another hiding place after Ramona had gone home. Henry looked out of the window. Ramona was no longer on the steps. Apparently, she had lost interest in Henry when he was silent, because now she was skipping down the driveway. He couldn't let her go. She was his only hope. Ramona, wait! yelled Henry. Ramona stopped and looked back. Come here, called Henry. I want to tell you something. This tempted Ramona. She walked back and stood under the clubhouse window, looking up at Henry. Henry had a feeling that if he was going to get Ramona to do what he wanted, he had better make this good. Uh, Ramona, I'm going to let you in on a secret. A big secret. Ramona, who liked secrets, looked interested. Henry decided to build it up. A secret that only boys know, he added impressively. I don't like boys, Ramona informed him. Boys are mean. Henry saw that he had better choose his words with more care. At the same time, he had to hurry because it was almost time to start his route. Only three people in the whole world know the secret. He watched Ramona's reaction. She seemed to be waiting for him to go on. Henry lowered his voice as much as he could and still make himself heard through the glass. I'm going to tell you where the key to the clubhouse is. Where? demanded Ramona. Wait a minute, said Henry. First you have to promise something. He worked hard to look as if there was something mysterious and exciting about the promise he was about to extract, but it was hard work. He was tired of the game and wanted to get out. Now. If you promise to unlock the padlock, I will tell you where the key is. Ramona stared stonily at Henry. I don't want to. But why? Henry was desperate. I just don't, Ramona informed him. Oh, Henry groaned. Then he was mad, just plain mad. That Ramona, she was going to make him lose his route, and then he would never get his sleeping bag, and his father would be cross with him, and Mr. Capper would find another boy to take the route. Henry banged his fist against the side of the clubhouse. For some reason, that made him feel better. He began to stamp his feet and pound his fist and yell. At least, he thought grimly, this was keeping Ramona interested. 
and he couldn't let her get away. She was his only hope. Almost, it seemed, his only contact with civilization. It occurred to him that it must be almost time for the Sheriff Bud program on television, and Ramona never missed Sheriff Bud. It seemed silly to yell help and let me out when nobody was going to help him or let him out. Henry tried to Tarzan yell. Ramona sat down on the back steps and propped her chin up on her fist. Open sesame, yelled Henry, just in case it might work. The door remained shut. Then in desperation, Henry tried the club yell, hoping that somehow it would work like a magic spell. Fadada, 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 beep em boop em ba, rada da da boom shh, f a dee dee bobo. To his surprise, it did work like a magic spell. Ramona got up and came over to the clubhouse window. Say that again, Henry, she begged. This time it was Henry's turn to say no. To do so gave him great satisfaction. Please, Henry. Henry saw that he now had a bargaining point. A girl who would sing television commercials would naturally like something that sounded really good. I'll say it again if you get the key in and lock the padlock first. Ramona thought it over. P -p 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 pad lock begins with a P, she said triumphantly. Henry groaned. I know padlock begins with a P, he said. Now will you get the key? Then he added hastily, key begins with a K. We haven't had K yet at school, Ramona seemed suddenly agreeable. Where's the key, she asked. Feeling like a traitor to Robert Murph, Henry revealed the secret. Under the flower pot on the back porch. Ramona found the key and Henry could hear her fumbling as she inserted it into the lock. Say it, she ordered. Henry rattled off the club's secret words. Now unlock it, he begged, and outside he could hear Ramona struggling with the padlock. I can't, she said. I can't make the key turn. Henry pressed his nose against the window. Look, he said, go get Beezus. If you do, I'll teach you both to say fadada fadada whatever, and tell her I'm sorry. I am a traitor, thought Henry, a 100% traitor. But what else could he do? He had to get his papers delivered somehow. Then he began to worry about Ramona. Maybe she would forget to tell Beezus. Maybe she would remember Sheriff Bud first, turn on the television set, and forget all about him. There was nothing Henry could do but wait. Actually, he did not wait very long, but it seemed that way. It seemed to him that he waited and waited and waited. The clubhouse felt colder and damper and more like a dungeon every minute. At last, Henry heard footsteps coming up the driveway. Beezus had come to his rescue, he hoped. Beezus was alone, and Henry guessed that Ramona had stayed home to watch television. Hi, Beezus, he called through the window. It's sure nice of you to come and let me out after the way I've acted. The last words Henry found difficult to speak, but he felt better when he had said them. Beezus looked as if she had not made up her mind to let Henry out, though. I didn't say I was going to let you out, she reminded him. You don't want girls around, you know. Henry had no answer for this. Oh, come on, Beezus, he pleaded. I've got to start my route. Beezus thought it over. All right, I'll let you out, but only because I know you have to start your paper route. She agreed, like the sensible girl she was. But first, teach me the secret words. Henry knew when he was licked. Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. Fadada, fadada, fadada. Fadada, 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 Beezus repeated gravely. Beep em, boop em, ba. Beep em, boop em, ba. Fortunately, Beezus learned quickly and soon mastered the secret words. She was a girl who kept her part of the bargain. She unlocked the padlock and slipped it out of the clasp. There, she said. Thanks, Beezus, said Henry, as he stepped out to fresh air and freedom. He picked up his bicycle. He had no time to talk if he was going to get his papers folded and delivered. Beezus did not seem to mind that Henry was in such a hurry. Fadada, 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 she chanted. Goodbye, Henry. I'm going home to teach the secret words to Ramona like I promised. Henry threw his leg over his bicycle and pedaled down the driveway. Now the secret words would be all over the neighborhood. Robert and Murph would not like it, but Henry hoped that since they knew Ramona, they would understand and not mind too much. That Ramona, thought Henry, always causing him trouble on his route. He would have to do something about her, but what anybody could do about Ramona, he did not know. All he knew was that if he was going to keep his paper out in his clubhouse, he had better do something, and do it soon.